Hi, I'm Paul Rivera with the Audi Club, and we're here in Mallorca, Spain, with Dr. Thomas Hajduk from Audi AG, the man responsible for the development of the 3.0 TFSI. How do you do, Dr. Hajduk? Thank you. I'm fine. Nice to meet you. We're good. Thank you very much for taking the time for your busy schedule and doing no this interview. So tell us all about this wonderful motor that I've just driven. <laughs> I'll do it uh, for you. Um, I think we have developed a 3.0 video to, for the S4 to offer really an excellent uh, dynamic behavior in the car. And we have chosen this supercharger motor because it has an excellent response. If you push a pedal, you have an immediate response in the car. And I think you have uh, felt it before in your test drive here on the circuit. That's right. Now, one of the great advantages of the direct injection is that the supercharger can be downstream from the throttle body. Right. And basically, once you went to the direct injected motor, you're merely controlling air and you don't have to worry about the fuel mixture. So how does that help with the response to the throttle? Yeah. First of all, we have an excellent packaging in our V6 engine. The uh, supercharger fits excellent in the middle of the, of the engine and we could uh, re, um, put out the intake manifold and replace it for the uh, supercharger. And we have a special um, wastegate in the compressor which help us to uh, reduce the losses in the... Uh, the parasitic losses yes, in, right. in that. Yeah. So you're able to still have a 7000 RPM that's right. On a supercharged motor, which is unusual. Which is unusual and which was a special topic we wanted to reach with this engine because of, we wanted to make a sportive engine and therefore the objective was to reach a 7000 RPM engine speed, which we have done, and that without any noise from the supercharger. Right, boy, that was a, that was a challenge, wasn't it? It was a challenge, but I think the uh, result is, is very good. Now, when you're decelerating, please tell me about the vacuum effect on the supercharger lobes. Yeah, we have a special decoupler on the supercharger. Uh, therefore, this one reduces very much the vibration of the supercharger. So if you decelerate and you have the inertia of the compressor, this decoupler spring helps you to reduce the uh, dynamic and the vibration of the compressor. Oh, that's fantastic. And it, when they're operating in the vacuum, they have no resistance also, right? That's because right. they're basically in a free environment to continue turning. That's right. So then when you open your throttle and allow the air to pass through, it changes from a vacuum to a positive atmosphere? That's right. That wow. And that's hence the, the, the fast response with the throttle. That's right. You have very low um, volume mm -hmm. uh, behind the compressor. And therefore, you have a very quick response. So the the actual charge necessary to fill the chambers is it, because it's such a short length. That's right. And therefore, it's a very uh, low volume and so it makes uh, a quick response. Now, how does that work with the valve lift? Does it have valve lift like the, the three point two, or merely variable valve timing? Now, we do not have any variable valve train here in this engine because okay. we don't need it. Okay. And uh, we have all advantages on the supercharger side and it's not necessary for this special engine to have the ABS system. Okay, for the ABS system, right. Yeah. And now, is there? A, it's a high compression ratio, right? It's 10, 8 to 1? That's right, yeah. Right. It, which is unusual for a pressurized engine. Yeah, but it helps you to have a good efficiency. Right. Right. Tell me about some of the details, like the piston rings and things like this. Now, for this engine, we have a special reduction development done. So we have a special oil pump in here with a volume flow um, regulated and on two pressure levels we are working this engine. Two so pressure levels? Two pressure levels, yeah. If you start uh, accelerate the engine above 4500 engine, you switch over to a higher pressure level and below you have a lower pressure level and you save, uh, you save uh, Fuel. friction. You yeah? save friction. Yeah. And uh, you've got a reinforced crankcase as well by a heat treatment. Tell us about that. That's design. right, because compared to our natural aspirated engine, uh, we have been much uh, very high levels inside. And therefore, uh, we have developed a special heat treatment so that the crankcase is able to uh, get uh, higher loads and that we don't have any damages in the crankcase. Has, has the crankshaft itself been any different crankshaft for this motor versus the 3.2? 
Yes, we have reduced uh, um, the, uh, the lift of the, the, lift of the, of of the, the crankcase. Of the crank. oh, so, that is, so that took it from 3.2 to 3, that's three right. liters. That's, that's the stroke. You that's reduced the, the stroke down. Yes. So it's a shorter stroke motor, which means it revs freer as well. Yeah, that's, right? that's right, and uh, therefore the crank uh, shaft is much stiffer than compared to the 3.2 liter, and therefore it's able to to have uh, higher uh, loads on the okay. Was there any special design on the head design versus, say, the 3.2 liter? Yeah, we uh, have, uh, of course, different uh, valve lifts. Especially for the special camshafts, special camshafts, camshafts that's right, and we have also different uh, valves because uh, we have higher temperatures in the cylinder heads, therefore we change the uh, valves itself. Okay. And uh, we have different spring forces because you have different pressure on the valve train itself, and therefore we have to uh, develop new valve springs also. See, that's the thing that impresses me so much about Audi Engineering versus, say, an aftermarket tuning company. You design the motor from the ground up to perform correctly instead of modifying the motor and then seeing what the results are. <laughs> no, we have it's a, a very big close, close look at, at each detail of the engine, really to reach the optimum result for our clients. So this uh, has a, a timing chain, so the timing chain lasts for the lifetime of the motor. That's right. And what do you think is a conservative figure for the lifetime of the motor? 200,000 kilometers, 300,000 kilometers? I think about 300 kilometers, 300,000 should be possible, something like that. And it's minimal maintenance, you're talking about fluids, spark plugs, uh, filters, that's about it for the maintenance on the motor. Yeah, yeah. I think we have a special plan for that. And how many years does it take you to program the software between the ESP, the sport differential, the engine system? I mean, that must be an intensive development of software in this. That's right. Uh, we have a lot of departments, of course, involved in such a program to, to uh, develop such an S4. And, uh, it's a big effort. So now you're testing of it. You've tested it in places with high temperatures. You've tested it out in cold temperatures. So it's, it's experienced the whole world as part of the development. Do you ever sleep? That's great. Was there anything else that you can tell me about the engine that we haven't covered? No, I think that was the main point, and I think at the end, if you have seen here on the uh, racetrack, that the result is uh, very competitive and that we can offer a good product for our clients. Well, Dr. Hyduk, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. For Thank you. I really appreciate it.